A lot to digest here. Here to join us with some of the latest developments and more, Dr. Jennifer Primigia of uh, Virginia Hospital Center's infectious disease uh, physician. Good to see you once again this morning. Uh, I want to start first with the, the vaccines themselves, with Pfizer, the emergency uses that they had been under right now, now a new target date uh, for September. If that is approved, um, essentially not just the emergency status, what does that mean? So I think that, that is a good tool to help us move forward with some of the patients that are still vaccine hesitant. Uh, a lot of people have been holding off on vaccination because they were looking for that full approval. Also, some organizations have been hesitant to mandate vaccine until it was fully approved. So I think that's a step in the right direction. So let's get down to some more practical uses right now uh, when it comes to it. And first of all, a lot of questions that people have. Uh, first of all, uh, we talked about the areas like New York City where some places restrictions might be in place if you are not vaccinated. But for some folks, it might just be as simple as going to visit family coming up. End of the summer, Labor Day, you know, exciting times to go see family. Uh, if you are vaccinated, then what do you need to know when you go to visit other family members? It's always important to know the risk of the people around you. And that helps you make informed decisions about your travel plans. We've learned from the CDC in the last week or so that it is possible to transmit the virus, even if you're vaccinated, to uh, you're visiting are vaccinated or not. Because we know that the people who are not vaccinated are the ones who are getting very ill from this virus. These are the ones who are we're seeing hospitalized and those are the ones who are dying. So it may be wise to hold off on visiting loved ones if they have not been vaccinated yet, as we know that we're, we may be putting them at an increased risk. So a couple of things and apologies here. I want to go back to one point because you were breaking up just a little bit there. Um, if you are vaccinated and you do uh, contract the Delta variant, can you pass that along to somebody else who was also vaccinated? Yes, and we learned that from the MMWR report, the CDC report from the Provincetown Cape Cod outbreak. What they found was that the people who were vaccinated and the people who were unvaccinated who had COVID-19 had similar levels of virus in their nose at the time of testing. That means that if you do have COVID-19, you are capable of transmitting that virus to other individuals. But the, the extent of the potential impact of that seems to be much more significant amongst those who are not vaccinated, correct? Right. So the vaccines work. If you are vaccinated and you become ill with COVID, you are most likely uh, to have non-severe disease. However, if you are unvaccinated, we're finding that with this Delta variant, you are more likely to get sick and you are more likely to be sicker than you would have been with the original COVID-19 strain. All right. One more question for you, because we're hearing more strains developing. Uh, people have talked about Delta Plus. People have talked about uh, some, other vac uh, some other strains that have come from other countries now making their way into the United States. Uh, is this something in the long haul? Will it always be there in one form or another? And if so, what do we do in the long haul? So the two best ways to protect ourselves are to get vaccinated and to wear a mask. If we can slow the transmission of this virus, we can slow the likelihood that new variants will